coverage from the Panhandle. Our Abby Walton is inside the amphitheater right now. That's where the president will be speaking later tonight. And Ben Kaplan talking to folks outside as they await the commander in chief. The president set to speak 8 o'clock our time. A lot of people across North Florida, of course, hoping to hear him talk about the impact of Hurricane Michael and federal disaster relief. The president currently on his way. This is video from just a short time ago as he boarded Air Force One at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland on his way to Tyndall Air Force Base in the Florida Panhandle. He'll be speaking at that amphitheater and Abby Walton is inside for us right now. Abby, those folks starting to file in, lots of them, and they're excited, I'm sure. Eden, we are here in the venue right now where I'm not a great judge of crowds, but I will say probably there's a little more than a thousand people. The doors opening up about an hour ago, but people lining up way earlier than that to catch a glimpse of the president and hear his speech tonight. Let's take a look at some video from earlier in the day. We actually caught up with a man from Melbourne, Florida. He arrived yesterday at 930 in the morning to be the first person in line. And the second person that we talked to, it was actually a woman from Panama City Beach. She actually lives across the street from this venue. She got her spot at 130 this morning, saying she wanted to hear what the president had to say about him and Congress when it comes to hurricane recovery funds. If Congress isn't working with him, then we can't get the help we need until they all come together. Eden and Julie, again, the doors are open. They'll be open for probably about another hour or so as people continue filing in. Um, there were a lot of crowds probably stretching a good mile from the venue, so it's going to take a while for them to get in. Security is very heavy, so everybody seems to be patient and in good spirits, and they're very excited to see what the president has to say tonight. Back to you. Okay, Abby, yes, uh, the president have a lot of supporters. Um, they're in Panama City and in Bay County. They're overwhelmingly voting for yeah, him. Some 70-plus um, percent across the panhandle. Right, and the damage, of course, from Michael started at the coast but went well inland. North Florida not alone in this. South Georgia also in need of hurricane relief. Communities like Bainbridge and Donaldsonville badly damaged by the strong winds. And farmers growing pecans, peanuts, and cotton seeing big crop losses. South Georgia Congressman Austin Scott says the weight has really hurt. Uh, still hopeful that the, that the bill comes sooner rather than later, but from the standpoint of helping somebody uh, plant a crop for, for the 2019 crop year, uh, it's, it's, it's too late for that. Congressman Scott says he's embarrassed that the relief package has taken so long because of what he calls partisan bickering. As the president comes to Florida, there are new details on his tax returns. The New York Times reports he paid no taxes for years because his businesses lost so much money. The figures show the president losing money even as he wrote his book, The Art of the Deal. As Katherine Johnson reports from the White House, the president is calling that story fake news. President Trump is downplaying a New York Times report that claims he lost more than a billion dollars over a decade. The president tweeted, real estate developers in the 1980s and 1990s were entitled to massive write-offs and depreciation. You always wanted to